So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today I'm joined by Hayden Smith. He's the lead singer and guitar player for the band Germinator, an Australian rock band from Brisbane. So first of all, Hayden, how are you? I know it's uh, nighttime over there in Australia. I'm good. It's great to be here, Hector. Thanks for having me. Yeah, fair. Thank you for, uh, so for people that don't know, uh, uh, on my page, I have my email and for like more uh, like newer bands to contact me. So Hayden actually contacted me and sent me the album, uh, the upcoming album that's coming out on the 30th of August. And I listened to it and that's why we're talking. So bands, don't be shy. Talk to me. I, I, <laughs> I, I know I'll, I'm just one man, but <laughs> but I'll, I'll take time uh, to try to talk to you. So so Hayden, t tell me a little bit about Germinator because it's pretty interesting because I listened to the album and it has like a retro feel. It's like a 70s, 90s type of album. There's like garage mm -hmm. rock, there's psychedelia. Uh, there's a little bit of like uh, that uh, like that Brit pop influence as well. So all niche mashed in together. So tell me a little about, uh, you know, how when you guys formed the band and, and your influences. Yeah, well, this is something somewhat kind of new. Um, I was doing a, another band um, about four-ish kind of years ago, and then I was doing this a little bit on the side, but not really kind of getting into it too heavy. And then, as you might have heard with heaps of other people, but once COVID happened, I had a lot more time on my hands. So I started to kind of record more stuff by myself. Um, and we just got an opportunity one day to support like a bigger, I guess, Sydney Australian band um, they heard one of our songs and I just grabbed one of my good mates the drummer from the previous band Wade Beers and we just had like a couple of weeks to get ready for it we hadn't played any of the songs live or anything like that and that's kind of how it all kicked into gear um, and yeah just like you said drawing on those influences from those retro kind of classic rock psych rock 90s kind of stuff like that and everything in between yeah, like uh, like uh, growing up for you, like what what which were which bands did you gravitate to? When I was younger, like in primary school, um, it was definitely like the nineties, kind of like Nirvana and those uh, Silverchair was huge, obviously in Australia and throughout the world, um, and those kind of bands. Um, but when I got older, it kind of got into more like Radiohead and um, REM and Jeff Buckley and all those kind of people, and then as I got into like early twenties, the more like psych California psych rock bands, like OCs and wand and Ty Siegel and that, those kind of bands. And just kind of trying to bring that all together with the album, I think is just kind of everything so far, just trying to encapsulate it as into the 10 songs. Yeah. I think you did because every song, there's some, some songs that are more garage rock. There's some that are more uh, psychedelic. And it's funny that you mentioned yeah. California. <laughs> because you have a yeah. in the Californium, and, I, and, I, yeah, that's right. and I, I'm like, you're not Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, but it's a yeah. good song, you know, because, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers, all their songs are about California, uh, which I've been to. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting state. Uh, have you been there? Yes, I've been to California a couple times, actually. Um, yeah, it is interesting, especially I was in LA, that Hollywood Boulevard kind of area, very interesting place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope you saw the documentary Netflix about that hotel not to stay in. Yes. Yes, I did see that. The Cecil or something like that. Cecil Hotel. The something Cecil like that. Hotel. Yeah, it's funny because when yeah. I that, and people are like, oh, it was so cheap. And I stayed there like, people, you should like Google more. Like, <laughs> yeah. in a bad read the reviews. That's why it's so cheap, but yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah, uh, the you know when I when you sent me the when I first saw the name Germinator and I hadn't listened to the songs, I thought you were gonna be like a fresh crossover metal band because of them. <laughs> yeah, not quite. Yeah, yeah. Tell tell me a little bit about the name of the band, the inspiration. Oh, uh, I don't know. I just there was something I just liked the name. I don't know how I honestly it was something to do with I you think in my Kobe and Kobe and Germs like that you started 
<laughs> not really it was kind of like a like a growing out of something new like a germination so to speak if I had to kind of put something to it because like I said at the time I was in a different band that was I kind of was wanting to do something a bit different mm -hmm. and on the side but yeah it just it just kind of stuck you know yeah here in Puerto Rico we have a band called Fulminator but they're actually a crossover fresh metal band so I'm like oh, I'm <laughs> all right yeah but yeah, as I was wondering about the name. So uh so you guys wrote this album, all your like you engineered, you produced yourselves in different studios yeah. and houses. Tell me about the process of working on the album yourself. Yeah, so I myself outside do a lot of recording and engineering of other bands as well, like friends bands and stuff like that. And I've always liked the recording side of things and the producing side. So And just necessity these days, having to do everything yourself, you know, just money-wise and all that stuff. So, yeah, a bit of like a Frankenstein kind of situation. Like there were drums recorded in different albums, guitars recorded in different, oh, sorry, albums, different studios, guitars recorded in different studios. I did the vocals at my house, half of the guitars at my house as well. And then just kind of bit, bit of everything just kind of mashed together, which I yeah, love kind of doing was, that kind of stuff yeah. too. I was wondering like... uh Uh, did you use Pro Tools or anything? Because it does sound like very yeah. retro and like, and like but, but I'm guessing, you know, you, you're not using tape at your house. No, 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 no. That would cost way too much. But yeah, using Pro Tools, but just trying to use different, I guess, more, like you said, retro techniques, you know, like really saturating stuff and all the delays and stuff like that. Just really getting into the weeds of that stuff. Yeah, because I'm like, it, it does sound like have that, has that retro vibe and not like that modern sound that yeah. other bands have. So it, it would, that, I'm guessing the sound was very important to you guys. Yeah, for sure. Just trying to capture, I guess, yeah, just that 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 kind of sound, that that retro sound, but but not being too much in that direction, but not being too modern, like you said. Um, I think there might... And in between. Yeah, I think there's, yeah, yeah there might, I think there's one song that might have got mastered to tape, potentially. From memory, oh really? It might have been, it might have been Calif it might have been California actually. Or is it California or Californium? Californium. Californium. Yeah, I think it's an it's a I it's a it's a it's an atom or some sort of periodical thing. Yeah. Something. Yeah. So tell me about Californium. Is is it inspired of when you visited California? Yeah, kind of in a in a little bit in a kind of abstract way. Um, I guess this how it's kind of not what it seems in a little bit like some a lot of the songs that i write and that we do can be a bit abstract or a bit have different meanings that sometimes i don't even know until they're finished to be honest yeah sometimes the best music yeah you don't know the meaning and you know have to interpret so tell me yeah, about that's her. yeah uh you do you write the whole lyrics for the for the for the album yeah that's right and i usually do it after the music For nine times out of ten. Yeah. So what's your process when you're writing the lyrics? Um, I usually will kind of hum some sort of melodic thing. And if sometimes there's certain words that'll stick, like certain keywords and things like that. And I'll build it around that. Or there's a song on the album called Thumb on the Scale, where I actually had the words and the melody before the music, which is actually quite rare for me to do it to do it that way. Because mm -hmm. I find it more difficult to do it that way. What what way is more difficult? Like when you to do the to do the the melody and lyrics before doing the music. Oh, I find that yeah, I find that harder to do. But that's that was how Thumb on the Scale came about. I just had the chorus line and the melody, and I didn't have any music or anything, and I and it just kind of came reverse for me. Yeah, that would sound like it's something difficult to to do. You yeah, know what band really? You guys reminded me of, and I just realized that they're from Australia, the Vines. Oh, yes, I love the Vines. I do yeah. love the Vines. That's the, they, they kind the band of... that you, you guys remind me the, the most. It's like a, the Vines meets the Strokes. Yes. Yeah, the Vines had a good, um, what, what would you say? They kind of mixed like that kind of 90s grunge, yeah. if you want to call it. I used to yeah, with love the, that, with that, the that album that they had, uh, the one with Get Free. But then they disappeared. Mm. They put I think they did. Bubbles, but yeah. Yeah, they did other stuff. Um, 
God, I don't think I've released something from almost 10 years, but they always had a really good melodic sense. I felt bringing that Beatles kind of stuff in as well as the harmonies and stuff like that. Yeah, no. Yeah. Really. So that's when I was listening to your music, I got uh, I got a lot of those vibes. So uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've talked to other bands in in Australia and Brisbane. Uh, I, I interviewed mm -hmm. a band from Brisbane a few months ago, but <laughs> that's when I didn't know how to say the name, and I said Brisbane. And they were like, oh, yeah. no, it has an it's A. A I, didn't, I didn't know. But then, they, ah, it's Brisbane. Uh, yeah. it, it was more of like a shoegaze band. Uh, oh, but yeah. Australia has a has a great rock and metal scene. Tell me a little bit about, about the scene in your hometown. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Australia, Brisbane, just in, in general, too, the very the history, they have a very long history of rock music. I think the Saints might be from Brisbane, pretty sure. I might be screwing this up. So I might need to fact check me on that. Um, but oh, there's no, a, lot of, a lot of, <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's a big history of rock music in Brisbane and Australia for sure. Um, like bands like Powderfinger and um, more recently, there's been heaps of bands too. Even in the psych rock space as well, like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, which you might've heard of. Um, kind of a huge. There's no, there's yeah. no way of like they put out like they put out like thirty albums. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But Are they, they from there? Huge... No, they're from Melbourne, but they have a huge following as well. But there's kind of a renaissance of sorts, I, I think, of rock music in Australia at the moment, um, like of a resurgence. Yeah, no, there is, and right now, uh, you have a your. You have a single that's out on this. You have form on the scale. That's a single that yes. you can listen to. Uh, you have uh, also Follow the Unknown, Glass House, from, and Californium. And yeah. a few singles that people can listen to for people who haven't listened to the band. Let's talk about form mm -hmm. on the scale. Tell me a little bit about yep. that track. Yeah, so that's what the one I was saying before where the did the melody before the music. I just kind of had that that phrase just kind of came to me. It, I know it's quite a common phrase, but just like the the phrase of just kind of being under the the thumb of something or someone, and I just that just that concept of very loosely just about being kind of just the times at the moment. You know, like how especially in Australia, the the kind of cost of living and all that kind of stuff is everyone's kind of doing it hard. It was just kind of loosely about that. And I was. I think that's a it. worldwide thing, like the cost. Yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like uh, when our parents tell us, like, "Hey, I had this in your issue." Yeah, like uh, the cost of living right now is insane everywhere. Uh, yeah, that's right. I've never been to Australia, but I want to go uh, because it's a fascinating place. Uh, I I'll just yeah. go in the water or near things that <laughs> kill me. Uh, you'll be you'll be right. Yeah, I'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, fun on the scale, and that's the third track on the record. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but the album really starts really strong. Uh, I like, you know, I like all the tracks. You know, you start. Uh, I like songs like "Garden," "Seventh Dimension," uh, "Gallows." Uh, yeah, and I like how you end with the song with a song called "Goodbye." Yeah, yeah. Which that was semi deliberate be, because people will be like, "Are are you retiring?" Or like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's semi deliberate. When, when we play that show, when we play that at shows, that song, there's some people that just start like waving to to us in the crowd, kind of like tongue in cheek. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would, uh, I would think so. Maybe for the next, when you do the next record, instead of goodbye, you can do a song called "Fuck Off." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, no, the the album's pretty guitar driven, but there's a lot of melodies yeah. to it. Uh, and yeah, it does have that retro vibe. Uh, so it, it's pretty interesting that you guys did it yourself in the recording process. Like, uh, what did you learn about recording uh, with this album? Like, uh, that maybe you hadn't learned before. Like, anything new? Uh, just I guess timelines. There, I mean, I did. We did have help with recording the drums with our friend Dylan. He did some of the songs, just the engineering of some of the drums, because that can be quite difficult. But I guess timelines are getting stuff correct at the source, like getting it recorded well before you start mixing it, things like that. 
mm-hmm. and just hating listening to yourself <laughs> up, up, over and over and over, just things like that, you know, can can oh, be yeah. quite drain, draining <clears throat> when you have to do it like all the time. listening to the songs over and over, you kind of, don't you start like nitpicking stuff from the songs? Oh, yeah. And, yeah, that's right. And I'm a stickler for overanalyzing myself in stuff. So you just get, I think that's one thing I learned actually is saying it's finished. It's done. I'm moving, I'm moving on. This is, this is it. This is the song now. Let's move on kind of thing. That was a good learning exactly. kind of experience. Overanalyze. You're, it's never going to sound perfect to you. That's right. Or it'll just sound different to someone else than they hear it the first time. If I already listened to it like a hundred times at that point, you know? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So for you, uh, recording this album, like, uh, do you have like a song on this album that is the most like personal to you? Good question. Um, not particularly. Like I, the songs, I try to not write as much about myself as I can. Some little things will slip through in little phrases and stuff, but for the most part, I try to make it kind of abstract or just about common things. Maybe, maybe a little garden, maybe there's, there's parts of dreams in there, I guess, little things. There's a, excuse me, there's a part about like an apple tree in that song where it's just, I had in a dream, just like little things like that. An but, apple yeah, tree? Not, yeah, there's a lyric in there about apple tree just that just that word just that couple words was in my my dream um but just random stuff you know things like that do you do sometimes you, i mean do you have like random dreams that you're like and uh, you wake up i'm like i gotta write this this could be a song uh not really but sometimes things will just come to me and i'll write it just you know i'll just write it in my in my notes on my phone mm-hmm. just write little phrases and things like that to come back to yeah but half the time it's just random crap but then sometimes it'll Go into a song, you know. Yeah, but in the album, you you have songs that are harder, like control. Control is like a straightforward. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. So let me show the artwork of the album. Yeah. We'll talk all about the artwork. So here's the art the artwork for the debut album, uh, which is Germinator. So w- tell me a little bit about this artwork. It, it looks like something that I would see. In like a in like a gallery. Yeah, well, my one of my uh, friends, Sam Arnold, who's a artist painter, did that for me. I've known him for ages, um, and I've always wanted to do something. And I, I basically said I just had a idea, but I basically liked he he did something quite similar to the face thing. And I said just do something like this, but you know, in your style. And I just kind of let him go, and he just he smashed it knocked it out of the park to me when i look at it it's just like faces just devouring each other it's kind of how i describe it it kind of looks like a big germ <laughs> yeah well yeah that's a that's a good thing as well it yeah. goes with the name but yeah yeah it, can, it could be interpreted all germs just kind of like eating each other yeah. he, he did one thing he mentioned to me which i still can't see is when he starts paintings, he kind of writes letters from the bands or something he works with. So apparently there's like a Germinator in there somewhere or, or a G or something in there. I, ca- I still can't see it. Uh, I can't see it either, but uh, we'll... Yeah, it's in there somewhere, apparently. <clears throat> I was going to ask you, like, uh, because it's a ballsy move not to put the band name on the cover. Yeah, I'm very into not putting band names or names of albums or songs in the album artwork. I don't think I've got them on any of them. Actually, now I think about it on Spotify. I'd have to look at it, but I'm pretty sure none of them have names. Awesome. So I kind of like, yeah, having it as art, like an actual art. It's nice. It is a, a nice looking artwork and it also looks retro. Which goes Yeah, right. Uh, with the feel yeah. of, the, of the sound of the band. So yeah, pretty cool artwork. So uh, I know the you, you guys on Instagram, you have your the pre-orders. Uh, where can people like, you know, get the, like pre-order the album? Yeah, so we have it, we actually have it on vinyl. I've got one here just to- Oh, uh, let, we've got one here. The, can we look at the, ah, oh, that looks pretty trippy. Nice. <laughs> So if they want to pre-order that, it's on band, our band camp at the moment um, to pre-order. And there'll still be more once the once it's live. 
um, and just, you know, the usual kind of streaming services as well. And we'll have other merch up as well at some point, shirts and stuff. Nice. Uh, how many color variants do you guys have for the album? Of the actual vinyl itself? Yeah. Only only one. Just okay. keep it pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. only one. Yeah, but well, it looks, I, I like how it looks. It looks cool. And I got to... Yeah, it came out really well. It came out really well. I'm very, very happy with it. Yeah. Like, do, do you have, in Australia, do you have like a, like a vinyl plant or... Like yeah, what? there's a, there's a, yeah, we do. There's a couple. The most popular. There's a popular one in Melbourne. Um, it's called Zenith, and there's one in Brisbane actually called Suitcase Records. Oh, cool. Um, but I, but this actually got done funnily enough, not in Australia. It was done in Paris. Um, at this place called yeah, called Vinyl Vinyl de Paris. I think it's called. Um, that were really helpful getting it done. Interesting. Yeah, you see, whatever you can get it done, man. Uh, the important. Thing yeah. It's that it's available for, and uh, I know your Instagram, uh, what other socials can people follow you? Yeah, so we've got us on Facebook, uh, we're on YouTube, and we have a TikTok, but it's kind of neither here nor there, to be oh, honest. Oh, I, I have a TikTok too, but I have a love-hate relationship with TikTok. Right? Yeah, that's same. I remember when I started the page, <clears throat> my sister was like, open TikTok, you will get more people subscribed, but... I found that doing shorts on YouTube, I got more people to subscribe that way. Yeah. TikTok. yeah. I don't know. I I'm not opposed to it, but it's just, you know. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it. So, uh, so Hayden, like, uh, you know, like, let's talk bands. Like, uh, like uh, I remember when I first started the channel, I had like this uh, episode with my friend, Senorita Sabrosura, where we talk about like albums that we take to a like an island, like top five yeah. album uh, that you would take if you had nothing to listen to. Like if you if you're up to it, we can do that. Yeah, okay. I'll try and go just straight from the top of my head. Yeah. So five albums, like that you would take to a desert island, and why? <clears throat> um, first thing that comes to mind is Grace by Jeff Buckley. Um, that's just it's just one of those albums for me. Um, when I heard it, I just couldn't stop listening to it. There's just, I don't know, it's something, something to that album. The, and he, cause he didn't have many, he only had one real studio album, but it was, yeah, but, I don't uh, know, just his voice. He tragically died. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I guess just his voice and his vulnerability in those, in those songs that he had. It's just, it just connected with me when I was younger and it just yeah. stayed with me. I that album. have to listen to that record. I, I haven't listened to Jeff Buckley. So yeah, on. it's yeah. I would highly recommend it. You may have to be in the mood for it because it, can, it there's a certain kind of mood for it. But yeah, it's it's one of those albums for me. Um, Scott's the second album, it's just again straight off the top of my head, probably have to be in Ramos by Radiohead. Um, kind of similar reason with the Jeff Buckley album. Just all those songs just stuck with me um, and have influenced me throughout the last however long it's been out 15 years or something like that huge radiohead fan as well myself um that would be another one um I'm trying to think of something more recent if i could try and put some more modern and recent on maybe um manipulator by ty siegel it came out like almost 10 years ago so it's kind of it's still recent i guess that's recent um yeah yeah it's a it's a double album too so it'd be on for a while but it's it's I don't know if you know much about Ty Siegel, but it's it's such an amazing album, that album. Very, like, 70s um, classic psych rock influence, and it's just it's just some real good songwriting on that album. What, what am I up to now? Four? Three, four? You've done, you've done three albums. You have two more. Three. Okay. Um, this is... It, I'd have to go with Nevermind by Nirvana. It's, it's, it's such a classic for a reason. It's, it basically got me into playing guitar when I was younger. And it's just you know, it, it's what ha what hasn't been said by the, for that album, you know. Uh, I have the special, the last edition on, on vinyl for that one. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a classic album. The songwriting is amazing. Um, the production is amazing. The performances are amazing, and it's in my early years to playing and songwriting. In the beginning it influenced a lot. So yeah, that would it be and... awesome to 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 have an album produced by Butch Big? <laughs> Oh yeah, he's done so much amazing work. He's yeah. 
he, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he, he's him and Eric Valentine are probably one of my favorite producers. I don't know if you know much about Eric Valentine. He's done like um, Queens of the Stone Age and oh, I know Queens Third Eye, yeah. yeah, Third Eye Blind album, bands like that. He's he's done a lot of good stuff. Um, last album would be one I'm re- listening to recently that I can't listen to would be Murmur by REM. It's just their debut album. It's just it's such a good debut album. It's I don't know. I'm just really loving it at the moment. That's a kind of fresh one I put on. Nice, uh, solid picks all around. So, so Hayden, uh, you know, it's been cool chatting with you. Uh, so the band, the album's out on the 30th. What's coming yep. for Germinator once you put the album out? So we're, we're going to have a launch show in Brisbane at its venue called Tomcat in Fortitude Valley. That's a little bit after, about like a month after that. Um, and then we're going to just have a few more shows kind of leading up towards the end of the year, just in support of the album as well. Awesome. And uh, are you thinking, are you already thinking of writing a second album or is it too soon? Yeah. Funny, funny you say that because there's, there's actually a second album that's kind of like the opposite of this album that's almost finished. It's basically just, it's got a bit more to record on it. That'll probably come out next year. Almost it's a bit, it's a bit... like the sound or what's, what would be the difference? Yeah. I mean, it's, instrumentally it's the same you know guitar there'll be synth stuff like that but i just mean like there's some softer songs acoustic songs maybe some more like surf rock kind of stuff but similar but it's kind of like an extension of the album but not not as hard rocky kind of sounding okay yeah but it's it's cool i think uh it's cool to like do variations of the sound so uh, yeah, so I have the album on the 30th. I'm going to put the links for people who want to pre order that and some shows coming up. So, uh, anything you'd like to say to the people or the fans before we go? Oh, just thanks for having me, Hector. Um, I hope everyone enjoys the album when it comes out. Yeah, so you heard it here Germinator <clears throat> self titled album on the 30th of August. So, I would recommend this to people who like. Garage Rock, the bands that we talk, and hopefully I'll try to also review the album the week it's out here on the channel as well. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Yeah, so until next time, Couchers, PC Sector, The Shield Dude on a Couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.